that she's referring to uh, the first movie once again. So I want to pause here and I want to give um, Rob the, the, the microphone here. I kind of gave it to Cassie. Uh, Rob, why don't you explain to people exactly why Bryce Dallas Howard did not get paid <laughs> the same amount of money that Chris Pratt did. So go ahead. And yeah. So those. when actors are negotiating with their agents and with the studio for major roles, um, it's largely dependent on what their past you know, box office success, cum, you know, generally is. And um, Chris Pratt is a lot more successful with his projects than Bryce Dallas Howard. Uh, Bryce Dallas Howard was in The Help, which I just watched for the first time today. Uh, she was in, you know, Lady in the Water uh, with M. Night Shyamalan. But before Jurassic Park Fallen Kingdom, she wasn't in many notable roles, many uh, movies that brought in a large box office haul. So, there would be no justification to offer her the same money that Chris Pratt would be making, uh, you know, be, being a larger star, being in, in uh, vehicles that sort of, uh, you know, showcase his, his like his action background. But um, but yeah, I mean, that's basically it. It's just a business negotiation and decision by Universal. Um, that's it. You know, that's that that's basically what it comes down to. Yeah, it, it is one of those things where I hear so many people complain about, you know, how, well, I'm not getting paid as much as, like, this star, right? And this was a thing back when the Avengers started uh, years ago because when, when they went through the first phase of the MCU, a lot of those guys outside of, like, Robbie Downey Jr., because he had did, like, two Iron Man films before the first Avenger film came out, they weren't really making that much money. I think Chris Evans, Chris Hemsworth, and I think like Scarlett Johansson only got paid, I think, like two million for their first um, like solo movies or to be in, in those movies or whatnot. But that was because, well, they were they knew that they were going to be making more films down the line. And they were kind of betting on the success that, hey, if this actually does become a popular trilogy, then, yeah, we'll renegotiate with you down the line. You'll actually get more money. But the, the whole thing of equal pay just kind of takes away from the. The, the perspective of star power and yeah some people are just simply bigger stars than others right like there, there's mm -hmm. no justification for why someone like you know let's just just throw it out there chris evans back in 2012 will get paid more money than uh robert downey jr same argument about uh scarlett johansson right yeah some people are just bigger stars than, than, than other people. That's what the whole concept of the money draw came down to but what happened is that after me too Everyone started making these arguments that, oh, well, I'm not getting paid as much of my male co-stars because of sexism. It has nothing to do with star power and drawing power whatsoever. It's just because I'm a woman and I'm oppressed in Hollywood because Harvey Weinstein made me uh, join him in his hotel room to get an Oscar nomination. So it's like, how, how do we even correlate the, those two arguments together? And here we are here. Let's be honest. Bryce Dallas Howard is not a big like major part of, of this series. Like her whole claim to fame in the first movie was running from a T-Rex in high heels. Like that was kind of like a joke. And then like after that, it was like, well, we really don't know what to do with her character. She's just Chris Evans' love interest. So in the second film, she was like a dinosaur's rights activist. And does anyone really remember what her role was? And in the third film, she was essentially a de facto mother to like the clone girl who do humanity in the end of the second film. So yeah. It's one of those situations where actors complain about this. And by the way, I wanted to throw this out here because Spencer is right. Terrence Howard was the highest paid actor for the first Iron Man movie because at the time, believe it or not, he was a bigger star than Robert Downey Jr. Well, Robert Downey Jr. Uh, yeah. Yeah, he was, was kind of a comeback. Yeah, exactly. And he was considered a risk at the time. And but Terry Tower was um was the bigger star. So when they came back to do the second movie, they didn't want to pay Terry Tower as much as they paid him for the first movie. So they told him either take a pay cut or they were gonna recast him. Obviously, Howard said that he wasn't gonna take the pay cut, and then they ended up getting uh Don Cheeto instead. And didn't didn't Howard just come off hustle and flow so he could get paid more being an Oscar winner? Yes, yeah, Oscar nominee. So I think that that's why and obviously Downey was coming off of his rehab. You know, yep. not not really having a lot of whole roles before Iron Man. Um, but yeah, I mean, like one of the funniest things to me is just like the amount of the amount of revenue that these that these actors bring in. They use it like a political tool. They use they are a political argument. Like Michelle Williams saying, "I didn't get paid what Mark Wahlberg did," and it's just like you guys live in and work in Hollywood. This is not like yeah. this is not a normal job. This is a power center where the the amount of uh, business you generate is 
what you generally negotiate with um, in determining, you know, what you're going to make on a certain project. And so it's just like, it's not the real, it's not the real world in the sense of, you know, you have a marketable skill. Uh, I mean, you, you know, you do, but it's so exaggerated past yeah. what you would expect in a normal working environment. What I would do is uh, I would blame their, their agents. They're the ones that negotiated the contracts. And if they saw that, um, that their co-star was making more, they should say, well, either bump up my salary or, 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 or not, I mean, or maybe you're just told, you know, you're not as big a draw as, um, as Chris Pratt, Chris Pratt probably could open a film more than uh, Bryce Dallas Howard could open a film. Yeah. And, uh, I, I, I just can't, I'm, I'm fixated on, on one point. She made $8 million. I would love for her to come anywhere in my job site and plead how miserable it is that she made $8 million to run yeah. around in high heels Keep in mind, against imaginary dinosaurs. She made $8 million and then was still upset that Chris Pratt was making 10. Like, think about that for a second. Like, think about just the ego behind that sentiment alone. Yeah, think about it. I mean, uh, I my, my take-home pay, probably uh, after taxes, is probably doesn't even crack 30000 a year. Mm -hmm. I'm supposed to feel great sympathy, and I have a master's, by the way. I'm supposed to feel great sympathy for for this uh, for this individual who who made only eight million dollars, as compared to her co-star, who made ten. I mean, the two million dollar difference, and, and I and I'm supposed to cry for you. Add to that the um, the idea that uh, oh, geez, I just forgot my idea. I found it, um, but it's um, well, I, I forgot. All I know is that eight million dollars is uh, is really nothing to to cry about. Yeah. And I also want to point out that before she did Jurassic World, the only movie that she was in for like three years before that was the very last Twilight movie. So that's what she was doing before she jumped into the the Jurassic World franchise. This is the and she's, she's not there. a good actress. Let's just can we get that on the table right now? I mean, I I hold it against Bryce Dallas Howard probably because she's that's the daughter of. Ron Howard, and that she was in that terrible M. Night Shyamalan piece of shit called Lady in the Water that my mother loves, and yeah. I can't stand it. It's just like, oh my, and it's like, th there's an actually an interesting moment when the movie could actually hold your attention with Paul Giamatti's character, but then yeah. it goes off into some fairy tale bullshit. So like, I just, I, I can't take that movie seriously, and she just pisses me off anytime she shows up on screen. Um, but but yeah, I, so I don't I don't expect anything. She sounds like an entitled spoiled brat who you grew up in Hollywood her. and was handed, you know, basically four million dollars after taxes. You want you wanted her to be devoured by the dinosaur, didn't you, Rob? Didn't you? Well, that would have at least given me my money's worth well, or close well, it's to it. Yeah, it's interesting though that <laughs> in this this is a rare case where Bryce Dallas Howard or or a woman is not complaining about. Uh, toxic uh, masculinity because he was going to take care of it. He was going to solve the problem. If you know, if she would have said, No, I will go, I will go and make my case as to why I should be paid the same amount as this guy who has been in massive franchises and can pretty much open a film and can even uh, can even have a, a uh, what is it a streaming television series yeah. and, and be massively successful in that i'm going to make my case as to why i should be paid the same amount as this guy uh, but yeah. no she let she let him take care of it so i guess that's a one case where uh, male privilege uh, does uh, does uh, come in handy i don't know yeah it seems like uh she she just wants to write on on Poppy's coattails. Like, just because your daddy is who he is doesn't mean you're supposed to make more money because of it. You make more money based on your own merits. And I don't watch these Jurassic World movies, but it seems as though her character is kind of like a throwaway. And oh yeah, yeah. And I think it's fair to say that there are a lot of uh, roles that are in Hollywood for women that could be considered throwaways because they're typically like damn like a lot of them can tend to be more like the damsel in distress or like she this per this female is just going to be the girlfriend or wife character of main protagonist and that just comes with the territory like it just that's just a part of it 
And I mean, I guess it's rude as fuck of me to say this, but it's like, homegirl, you're you're in your forties, and you know you're going to be desired less and less as time goes on. So get fucking used to it. If you want, if you want staying power, you're going to have to prove it on screen. You're going to have to earn bigger roles. You're going to have to prove that that your name, besides it being your father's, is worth a damn. And it's yeah. not necessarily easy to do, but you still have to do it anyway. You know, and, and if you don't like it, then go get a fucking job working at, at, at Dollar General, bitch. Like, I really have no sympathy for you. Yeah. You know, this bitch is whining after making $8 million. You gotta be fucking kidding me, bro. Yeah, I, I agree. Guess someone made $2 million more than her. Oh, well. Ah. Uh. You know, it's funny to me because it's like she could even claim like, like like there's some kind of war going on because isn't he like Arnold Schwarzenegger's son-in-law now or something? Yeah. So, <laughs> the the war of the Hollywood family dynasty. Yeah. You know, I mean, show me a movie about that. I, 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 I tell you what, I'd actually respect her if she just like unironically went, oh yeah, he only got that because he's Arnold Schwarzenegger's grand uh, son-in-law <laughs> or something ridiculous like that. <laughs> Well, yep. I don't. Th- I don't. I don't think that uh, was it. Patrick Schwarzenegger was trying out a career in film. I don't think that he's going to make uh, as much money as Bryce Dallas Howard if they were in the same film. Uh, no. what, what's going to be her argument? Is she going to say, "Oh, yes, he should be paid the same amount uh, as as I as I'm getting paid"? I mean, sorry. I mean, not every not every daughter of a director can turn out to be Angelica Houston. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I will say it's good on her for at least bringing Chris Pratt up in like the hero role on some level because so many yeah. women bad, no man bad or not good enough, yeah. you know. You know well, like yeah, so. good on her for that. You know? Yeah. And to that point, real quick, you no, know, no, there's probably feminists out there that would still complain that oh, it took a man for for her to get you know, a fair role. Like even like going against like giving him credit or whatsoever, they'll still try to find some kind of way to make themselves the victim of that, which is pretty sad, all things considered. At the end of the day, these people support an industry that has purposely made itself um, modular, where you can just put in, you can trade any actress for another one any male actor for another it's absolutely entirely modular these people have no true skill sets that separate them from the next tom dick and harry let's be real now like i don't go out of my way to to watch any of these modern day actors in hollywood not like i do with classic traditional actors that that were known to be a particular to have a particular skill set to, to have a particular reason to draw an audience. I'm not going to fucking fangirl over her or Chris Pratt even. Like, you, at this point, it's like either accept the job or don't. If you don't like it, don't fucking accept it. Don't fucking stand on your soapbox and whine to me how you only made eight million fucking dollars. I don't want to hear it. Yes, I mean, she could easily have been replaced for Jurassic uh world um was the second one whatever it was called dominion or whatever the, the, the she, awful they, one which was fallen kingdom yeah well what what you know okay fallen kingdom sorry all yeah. right <laughs> she could easily have been replaced with another character altogether i mean there was no reason for her specifically i mean she was not that needed for the second or the third film no nope. I mean, so so what is, what is she no, going really on about terrible i think audiences would have accepted a, a hot wife um, edition from the second movie. So. <laughs> but unfortunately, well, I mean, we, didn't, we didn't get that. So, One of my sister's favorite TV shows in the, the early aughts to the late aughts was like that America's Next Top Model show. And they actually had a season. I remember because I was sick and I binged watched it. <laughs> mm-hmm. They had a season where they pulled see if she could compare to the models. <laughs> And she made it up to third place out of like twenty some models just because she had better hair and makeup and everything like Wait, that. Wait, who made it to who made like, it to third place? Well, like I don't remember what season, but it was that America's Next Top Model show with Tyra Banks and she they pulled off like this regular girl 
from the street this season. Oh God! And yeah, she's like I a blonde, yeah. and she made it to she made it to number three. And I was just, you know, I mean, I get that it's probably a show, and they probably kept her on for drama reasons. Yeah, but <laughs> but it's still like you know she had just better hair, and makeup, and you know she had co- you know poise coaching, and you know stuff like like all this practice, and you know you know a lot of competition. I mean, a lot of the time. So yep. yeah, Bryce. I mean, like Bryce Dallas Howard. Like I honestly heard her name, and I thought it was a boy at first because I was like, "Oh, Bryce, who's he playing?" <laughs> and so I mean, you know, it's yeah, they are very replaceable. So she, she, I, I mean, like she should be grateful. You should be grateful when you do good work and you get rewarded for it. And yeah, you should negotiate better because we have lots of opportunities for negotiating better. And I think that's the thing I hate about the feminist pay capped argument. It's like, look, just argue better for your career path. And they're like, well, it's not easy. And it's like, oh my gosh, do you hear how whiny you are? No wonder you get paid less. <laughs> well, well, well here, here, here's a question. Um, go up to um, someone on the street, put up a picture of Chris Pratt and put up a picture of Bryce Dallas Howard. Who, who is more likely to be recognized by just the average man or woman on the street? Yeah, is it going to be Bryce Dallas Howard or is it going to be uh, Chris Pratt? Who's the one that people are going to at least know or say, "Oh, that's Star Lord," or, or even though that's um that's the guy from Parks and Rec, yeah. they're probably going to recognize him more than her. So, what is she? What is her argument that she should be paid the same? The same thing with uh with one of um, Jacob's uh, favorites, the WNBA. Who who is more likely to be recognized? Uh, someone in the WNBA uh, or LeBron James. Even my mom knew who he was and she doesn't I mean, she never followed uh, uh, basketball. It took it took one of them getting arrested in Russia to get more media <laughs> coverage than any other ever deserved in their life. So that's the yeah. best I was known... say that. The only one I know is that one that got arrested right. in Russia. The best yeah. known WNBA player is Brittany Griner because she was arrested and this has been exactly. in the news the last three months. So it, it gives a lie that uh, you can't even get arrested if you're a WNBA star. Yeah. But it's uh, I'm sorry. It's a serious. It's a serious question. Who is going to be more likely to be recognized? Who is more likely to open um, a box office? Who's more likely to to get the to get audiences to come to see a movie? I mean, um, if you look at uh, what is it, Maverick? Uh, were audiences going to see uh, a movie with uh, Miles Teller, or were they going to say, "Oh, we're going to go see the movie with Tom Cruise"? It's uh, it's well, not exactly the same, and, but it's the name recognition. And and I mean, like if you if you kind of like would show people on the street a picture of of each of them, Chris Pratt and Bryce Dallas Howard, it's like, yeah, okay, Chris Pratt is like a handsome, in shape, like well defined man. Uh, great for his Bryce age. Dallas Howard, no offense to the women out there, okay, is a homely looking, <laughs> average white woman. <laughs> who has gotten by on her name, and that's okay. Yo, Rob, but Rob, she's, I what? was gonna go in on her on that <laughs> same exact ass, but you said it a lot nicer than I All would right. have. I, so <laughs> much so, I chose not to say it because I couldn't put it nicely. Yeah. So no, good on you. Said. Yeah, no, I'm a lot worse on Twitter. Um, but no, that's okay. <laughs> but no, it's but it's objective. It's not even like. Like, oh, hey, it depends on the person. It's like, no, Chris Pratt is objectively a more attractive, more luring man, leading man versus Bryce Dallas Howard. She's just an average looking white lady. 